Yo guys, welcome to the video. So today Masters 1 is finally happening and we are going to be posting a bunch of videos. So I've gotten access to all the deck lists um, for all the games today. So whenever a match is about to begin, you can go back to the YouTube council um, channel and then you'll be able to watch my analysis on what, what sort of uh, interaction thing that will be interesting to watch out for, who's going to be favored, and generally just give my thoughts about the matchup. So... Um, First, I would just like to say that like we're going to have some super, super crazy decks that are going to be played today. Um, and, and I cannot believe that these sort of decks are going to be played in a 250k uh, tournament, because most of these decks are not going to be meta decks. Sure, some of them are, but there's also going to be a lot of crazy decks. And I think we're going to have a bunch of great uh, gameplay today. And don't worry, these videos are going to be fairly short. So you'll be able to watch these quickly and then go back and watch, watch the game. So um, first of all, we've got... Tailbot versus Life Coach. And um, for Tailbot, he seems to be going for a strategy where he wants to go wide. He wants to avoid decks that are going for, for, for Tall Punish, basically. So he's playing Congregate Swarm. Um, that's a deck that we haven't seen in a long time. It's a deck that goes very wide. You have some cards that go Troll with the Fallen Knights, but it's not something you have to go for. Like, basically, if you know that the opponent is playing a bunch of Troll Punish, you can just not play them. Then he has uh, a Racker Swarm, which is also a deck that just goes super, super wide, uh, really, really point spammy. Um, so again, if the opponent is going for like this, this strategy where you just try to target um, decks that go tall, like via Kelly, this is going to be really, really good. Then you got Blaze of Glory, which is another deck that is also staying quite low. This is a deck we have seen quite a lot, right? So it's not, this deck is not particularly new, although he is playing a bit of a different version than usually, because as you can see, then uh, most people either go for the um, Blood Eagle package or for the Discard package. Tailbot said, oh, why not both? So we have Blood Eagle, we have Barbian, like you usually have in the Blood Eagle deck, but then you also have Burner and you have Coral. Um, so a bit of a weird one here. I'm really curious to see how that's going to play out, actually. Um, will it just um, like be like normal Skellige, or is there a reason why he, he went for this? Um, but yeah, like this this one is definitely uh, just also a solid deck. And finally, we got Inspired Seal, um, which usually wants to play a bunch of commandos, um, shuffle them back with Pavetta, and then uh, replay them. Um, again, this deck used to be super popular. Uh, ages ago, but now Fault has got a buff this patch. It hasn't really seen any play on ladder, but Tailbot seems to think that this suits his lineup kind of well. And I can see how that makes sense, because you just kind of want to stay low to the ground. You don't want to go tall, you just want to go pure point spam, and this is exactly what this deck is doing. However, the big weakness of Tailbot's lineup is decks that can punish wide. If the opponent can punish wide, then basically all of his decks are struggling. So, let's see what Life Coach decided to bring. Life Coach decided to bring Pirate's Cove. That is also not much of a, a surprise. Uh, this is probably a deck that we expected most people to bring. Um, although there's one interesting change to this Pirate Cove deck compared to what you usually see on ladder, and that is that it's running a Tin Boy. Now, a Tin Boy is obviously a great tool to punish white. So I could see this Tin Boy card being really, really great against most of Tailboss lists, to be honest. Um, basically a direct counter. And then we got the Patricidal Fury list, which is also super, super interesting. Something completely different than what we usually see on ladder. It's running Redea and Wild Ball of the Sea and Iced. And you might be thinking, what? Iced in that deck? Well, the idea is that you can use Redea to set up a discard um, with the Iced. And then you can set uh, use Leader to set up three Bloodthirst. So basically, you can double trigger Iced without having to use um, your Leader for it. Uh, well, I mean, you might use your leader to set up the Bloodthirst, but uh, you don't have to. Maybe you can just get the Bloodthirst anyway. Um, and this is also a deck that punishes white. Like, I guess you can see, like, you've got Lambert, you've got Wild Boar of the Sea, you've got Gerd. Like, this deck loves punishing white. Then you've got Ulm and Hunger. Um, and this is also a completely new list we have not seen before at all. So we have, like, first of all, you're like, Ulm and Hunger, that's just vibe. No, this is not Vi. This is the deck playing... Lambert, Glosty, um, Kran, Location, Mitabrakis, Striga, like, uh, so many of these cards are so weird. Um, but yeah, like, as you can see again here, Lambert for the White Punish, you have Werkert for the White Punish, you even have Glosty against his Arrakis Swarm, which will just play for so, so, so many points. And finally, um, you have um, 
Enar, which also punishes white, maybe a little bit less than some of the other decks, uh, since you only really got um, Lambert in this one. But there's one cool trick about this thing that might not be completely obvious if you haven't played with it, and that is that it's running Land of a Thousand Fables. Now, what does Land of a Thousand Fables do? Well, it pulls a special card from your deck, but then after you do that, you can transform a special card into a random card of the same provision. The thing is, sorry, for a random card, a random card unit from the same provision cost from that faction. That means that when you use Land of Thousand Fables to transform a card like uh, ass uh, Assault, then it will give you Drog, and Drog is also white punish because it will give you a lot of Revenants, which can just ping all the one point tokens um, from a Ruckus Swarm. So all of these decks are hard countering a Ruckus Swarm and to a certain extent else. Now, if you just quickly go back to the lineup that uh, Telbot is bringing, then there are no elves, so that's that's kind of fine. But he has a Raka Swarm. If Tailbot can get this Raka Swarm through, he will probably win the game. But if he cannot, he will struggle big time. That being said, Congregate and Spider Seal will also struggle into a lot of the decks that um, Life Coach is bringing. But maybe to a little bit of a less extent. Like, they are still Swarm decks. Yes, they will probably end up in trouble. But uh, with the right piloting, I think Tailbot should have his chance with these decks. But Raka Swarm, I really, really struggle to see how he's going to win with that. That being said, well, Tailbot is probably the big favorite to win this tournament. Like, I don't think it's, it's kind of hard, hard to argue against that. Um, so will he be able to, with these decks, to actually take the like take the win? Because if if you look at the matchups isolated, then Life Coach is a big favorite here. But then again, Tailbot is probably the greatest player since he has way more experience. Life Coach has been playing for quite a while. So I'm super, super, super curious to see how this is going to play out. So uh, yeah. That's basically it for the analysis, and see you before the next game, guys. Bye.